Hello everyone. In this video we will cover Polyprinter 229 3D Printer and the Polyprinter control software. This video is targeted for UTA electrical engineering students in junior and senior design, but the basic principles will apply to all Polyprinter 229s. The Polyprinter 229 is a very fast and accurate 3D printer. It has a 229 cubed printable area with a heated bed. You need special training and access privileges to use the 3D printers in UTA's electrical engineering makerspace. The Fab Lab inside the central library also uses Polyprinter 229s and is open to all UTA students. If you do not have your .g code file yet, please check out our Kiss Slicer video to learn how to create one. First thing we need to do is turn the Polyprinter on. We have a special access program that can keep track of all the prints in the EE labs. A certified printer operator must swipe their badge first. Then they will select the class associated with your print. Then you will need to swipe your student ID card to log your print. When access is granted, you can turn on one of the 3D printers. Okay, the software used to control the poly printers is called Polypronter and is this little button right here. Or you can search for Poly and find Polypronter software here. So go ahead and open that up. Now if somebody was already using the Poly printer for another print and you need to use the other one, you wouldn't come to this one. You would actually open another instance. So you would basically uh, start the program again to open up two different instances of the program. So as you can see, we have two of the polyprinters open at one time. And to control one printer from the other one, we simply select the correct COM port. So the one that we're going to be using today is on COM3, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Connect. Okay, connecting printer is now online. So far, so good. In order to move the print head around, please be sure to press motors off first and then you can position it manually. And one of the first things that you want to do is to set the extruder and the bed temperature on so it can be warming up as you load your filament. So let's go ahead and turn those on. And you want to make sure that your print head is out of the way so when you install your filament you won't get burned on this and please never touch this uh, green poly tape. The oils in your hands will make it slippery and your print will not stick to it. So the next thing we need to do is we need to insert the filament which we use ABS 1.75 millimeter diameter filament. Okay we're gonna load this white filament from Hatchbox and it is ABS 1.75 millimeter and you always want to keep these wound fairly taut because if they loop on top of each other it will snag it will cause the print to stop so So looking at this, do not touch the poly tape that is on the bed. You don't want your oils from your fingers getting on that. And definitely do not touch the extruder, which is extremely hot. Um, you'll see back here there is a just a little hook. And you want to install your filament where it's coming out clockwise, not counterclockwise. So you're going to place it on the hook back here. I'll try to get out of your way. And make sure it sets behind this lip. And the second thing you're going to do, you do not want it to do the hat. Okay, the second thing you want to do is put this little filter that we designed to go on the bottom. So you're going to push this filament right up through that filter. And then you're going to push it through the hole here. So that's going to wipe off any debris that this filament will collect and keep the nozzle from clogging. 
and with all the milling that we do in here we do get a lot of debris and it will clog this up pretty quickly so this has been a, a great help to keep our printers running smooth uh, the next thing is I don't know if you can see it there is a yellow wheel up here that has a magnetic switch you're gonna pull that down you're going to feed the filament over it and you're gonna close it so that should roll out like that the next step is you're going to there's a little knife in here you want a nice sharp edge so we're gonna cut that so now we have a nice sharp edge and then the next step is to move this out here and what you're gonna to do to keep this from breaking you're gonna hold it here and you're gonna push your thumb down this gives some pressure up and down so this goes to the spring this you're going to want to curl around you got to wiggle it down and then you're going to push it in and you're done so you'll see that the filament is fed by this motor right here and whenever we extrude it we're going to see that spin go ahead and push the print bed to the very back this will prevent debris from falling on it as we clean the print head and now that our nozzle is up to temperature we are going to extrude click extrude here and what we want to see what we want to see is not a gobbledygook like this that curls up that means when it's coming out of the nozzle it it has a uh, it's more oval than circular so we're going to take a brass brush and clean the tip really really good I think I'm going to lift it up so it's not so close to the ground now And we're going to hit extrude again and notice it's coming out straight now so that's what you want it to do this is basically a sample and you want to make sure that it's nice and straight so that is a nice that's a nice extrusion if for some reason it's not coming out good you can click on flush extruder and let's go ahead and do that and it will crank out about a meter a filament to help clean out the inside of the extruder and whenever this will stops then I can finally brush it off and you're going to want to keep this nozzle clean until you start your print so be feel free to use this brush to keep that as clean as possible so only the lab staff are allowed to change the nozzle it is very delicate and can break the printer quite easily so the next step is to make sure that the printer is calibrated properly I've made up these sheets right here that basically walk you through it and these are actually used in the calibration process so what you do is you simply place it on the platform make sure that you cover the forward left position and then on your polyprotra software you're going to click home so this is going to engage and go to the home position now that it's in the home position this piece of paper should slide fairly loosely in between now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess up the calibration so you can slide this off gently wiggle it out and then you can access whoa that was like a and then you can access the Z plus so here if you want it to be lower you simply turn it this way and then you have to rehome it every time you do that so I'm going to go up in the Z and then I'm going to rehome the Z and from there you will see that this is really 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 tight 
so that is much too low and will squish the filament deep into the uh, green polyamide tape. So I'm going to push this back a little bit to where it was. I'm going to raise it up 10. Now I'm going to rehome Z. And notice it's there's a tiny, tiny bit of friction, but the paper does slide back and forth quite easily. So this is about the thick thickness of paper is what you need this to be above your work surface here. So let's go ahead. That is calibrated quite well now. And put the side back on. Okay, so from here we are, have calibrated it. Now let's open a file. And we're going to look at the UTA lab key tag times four G code. So I went back and sliced this with Kiss Slicer and I just made four copies of it. I'm going to open that G code. And this does take a little while to load. It does tell you. Uh, how wide and deep it is and see it it tells you and here the estimated duration it says there's only 18 layers and it'll take about about 25 minutes for this print to complete I do find that this is usually off by quite a bit and takes a little bit longer but you can go ahead and double click on this uh, image area right here to examine the different layers and you might want to bring it out to be a little bit bigger and if you look the first few layers or there's actually something going on down here in the corner it's not really allowing us to see it but it is basically the first thing that the poly printer does is it clears its nozzle right before it starts printing so it's just dabbing a few little dots of uh, filament in the corner to get the nozzle nice and cleared out and flowing well before it starts so that's kind of a mini print job before it even starts. And so after it's done with that, then it starts this print job and starts it at layer 10 at 0.15 millimeters. And then each thing, each layer as it goes up, you can see the infill. Now you can see the text. And that's basically a good idea. It's a good idea to preview all of your prints so that you can keep an eye out for overhangs or maybe something that's not floating correctly. So if I zoom out, we can easily go down and see where it was printing out a few little daubs right here in the corner. Okay, with that, we can go ahead and start our print. So go ahead and hit print. And you always want to close the lead to create that heated environment to preheat the filament. And you will notice that the extruder will ramp up to the program temperature and kiss slicer. And you can kind of keep an eye on your print by this little progress bar right here. This will go up for each layer that it completes. And so as, as it's near the top, you know your print is about to be done. We also like to live stream the progress of the poly printers on YouTube. If you were to go to YouTube and go to UTAEE Labs, you can find all of our great videos and you can also see things print. So this way, anybody that has a print going on, they can keep an eye on it on YouTube and hopefully the second it's done, they'll come and get it and that will free up the printer for the rest of the students. Let's take a look at the Polyprompter software. And it took uh, 35 minutes and 38 seconds so like I said it predicted it was going to take 
24, 25 minutes. So like I said, it's going to be a little bit longer than what it predicts usually. Um, at this point, it should automatically turn this off. So this is the actual temperature. This is what it's set to. Don't ask me why there's a one there. One degree, don't know why. So before you remove your print, you must let this cool off first. It is still stuck very firmly to the bed. Okay, let's get ready to take these out of the poly printer. We have multiple tools to get to get these off. But like I said, if you let it cool off, give it about 10, 12 minutes to cool off, everything will come off quite easily. So if you clean tool, it just comes right off. It's just lifted off of there. So maybe there was some warping, but there's our finished product. One of them. Two of them. Piece of filament attached here. Three. And we're done. Hot off the press.